Hey, what do you know? I'm still alive! Sorry for the delay, folks. Uh, it's kind of hard making these things all by your lonesome when you're kind of working a full-time job just to make a living. Uh, not to mention that the current video's original file became corrupted and I had to start from scratch after working on it for like over a month. So, uh, needless to say, my motivation kind of went down the proverbial toilet. Nevertheless, it's done and ready to go now! Roll that beautiful bean footage! Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I liked all sorts of stuff. Ring pops, boppets, moon boots, Nickelodeon gack, and a Canadian animated show called Reboot. Reboot was a CGI animated series made by Mainframe Entertainment that aired from 1994 to 2001. The first of its kind! Never before has an animation studio tackled an ongoing series with nothing but computer-generated animation before. And, well, looking back at it now, it, uh, it kind of shows. But at the time, it was a marvel to look at. I mean, we never had anything like it. The series takes place inside a computer system called Mainframe. <laughs> yeah, I know. It follows the adventures of Bob, a guardian, along with his friends Dot and Enzo. Bob's mission is to protect Mainframe and its inhabitants from various perils and dangers. You know, like viruses, megabyte, and hexadecimal. Those are bad news, man. Bad, bad news. Reboot ran for four seasons until it was ultimately cancelled after its final episode, Crouching Binome Hidden Virus, on November 25th, 2001. It ended on a cliffhanger of all things! But I suppose the creative team was hoping to come back at some point and give it a proper ending? I can understand that to an extent. It's, a, it's been about 18 years. I don't know if we're ever going to get a solid ending on this thing. Though in that time, Mainframe Entertainment has made a number of attempts to bring the series back. I mean, there was a webcomic, a, a brief possibility of a feature film, and uh... A reboot of Reboot that's universally hated by fans of the original show. A show called Reboot The Guardian Code. I... don't kind of like it myself, if, but, but if you're curious about the series, just think of Code Lyoko, slow-paced writing, and uh, completely throwing out everything that made the original series enjoyable except for the term Guardian, and a single episode that's specifically designed to insult fans of the original. That might not have been their intent, but holy crap, that's what, that's what happened. <laughs> if you want my honest thoughts on the show, I don't think I have enough time to put that in a single video, but let me put it this way. I watched the whole thing from first episode to last episode, The Guardian Code. I watched the whole thing, and I was going in hoping for at least a mediocre show. Just something stale, uh, ordinary. Th those are my expectations. That is where the bar was. And I was still disappointed. Yeah. Yeah, that one ain't too good, let me tell you. And this is coming from a guy who actually enjoys the movie Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, I'm talking about the one with the Dennis Hopper and the Bob Hoskins and the John Leguizamo. Anyway, around 1998, Mainframe Entertainment released a game based on Reboot called... Well, Reboot the Video Game. From what I can remember, I had a hard time trying to beat the game. Was it due to my unsharpened video game skills as a child? Or is it just another hard game that has unrealistic expectations of its players? Well, let's find out! The plot of the game is an entirely original story developed by Mainframe Entertainment. People who are completely new to the game or the series might get a little lost following it along, so I'd recommend at least watching the intro to Season 1 and 2 of the series, because they kind of, kind of introduce themselves and the entire concept of the show. Right off the bat, the game doesn't really offer any sort of tutorial whatsoever, so I'd actually recommend going to the pause menu and looking at the controls to see what does what. Me, of course, well, <laughs> me being the doofus that I am, I charged ahead blindly and tried to figure things out on my own. It took a little bit. <laughs> you control Bob as he hovers around his zip board. Yeah, the thing that basically looks like a hoverboard and it is a hoverboard. No, it's called a zip board. His equipment consists of a pistol and his glitch, which fires special weapons and can act as a tear stabilizer. 
The main goal of each stage is to navigate through the environments and find tears and stabilize them. After stabilizing all of the tears in a level, you then have to collect megabyte keys that will allow you to jump into a bid window and access the next stage. The game more or less sticks to this formula while throwing in a boss battle every once in a while. One of the first things you'll notice when you start playing the game is that the controls are, uh... Oh, how do I put this delicately? Uh, about as bad as it gets for a PlayStation 1 game. Which, as a fan of the series, pains me to say, but I gotta be honest, it, 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 in terms of video game controls, it just, they, they just... Come on, man, they just outright suck. Bob's movements can be pretty tough to get a hang of. Think of the ice levels in Super Mario World, which is really problematic when you have platforming to do on a hover thing. And boy, let me tell you, there's quite a bit of platforming to deal with here. Platforming with the zip board can be a nightmare. Not only do you have to constantly wrestle with the momentum that the board gives you, but you often have to deal with enemies shooting at you while you're trying to platform. Half of the time because you can't even reach them because they're so far away, you, your, your gun can't reach them. I mean, come on guys, cut me some slack. I feel like Super Mario on roller skates over here. Mama! I mean, the controls themselves certainly don't help things either. They feel rather sluggish, especially when you're trying to make some turns while moving forward. I mean, it just, <laughs> they just don't work very well. Alternatively, you can use the right analog stick for movements, which helps sometimes. But honestly, I keep going back to the D-pad. When it comes down to it, it was like choosing between eating nails and eating carpet tacks. I mean, sure you don't want to eat either one, but you're going to have to choose one, and either way, you're not going to have a good time. One of the more infuriating parts of the game is the actual mending of the tear, which is a difficult process all on its own. You're supposed to get near the tear, use the mending function on your glitch, and just mend it. Simple, right? Very few steps. You'd think that there would be nothing to it. <laughs> Wrong! The tear constantly pulls you in, as if it just has this ridiculous, powerful gravitational pull. It, if you touch it, it damages you. The sporadic lightning that it emits damages you. And it's a freaking nightmare to try to keep Bob steady while you're trying to do the whole mending process. Because if you're moving too much, it's going to move you out of the way. And the, 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 the circle that goes into to, to aiming the uh, glitch to mend the tear, it just keeps getting misaligned. Because you, get, you keep getting pushed away. You keep getting shocked. You keep getting pulled into it. It's just... Uh, it's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> the difficulty increases as enemies become stronger, tear locations become more obscure, and platforming becomes even more ridiculous. I gotta say, I'm starting to have crash dummy flashbacks. I, 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 th I thought I finally moved away from that thing. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Video games have always had a balance in act to perform when it comes to difficulty. When is a game too easy? When is a game too hard? It's really tough to say, especially looking over games of yesteryear. What I can say is that despite how difficult Reboot gets, it does offer a save feature that allows you to try again from your last save point. The downside to that is, if you manage to beat the level with only one life left, well, that's all you have left unless you manage to get some of the few hidden extra lives throughout any given level. I often just restart the level so I wouldn't lose all my lives. Though that was mostly because I just didn't want to see Game Over, which actually forces you to see a bad ending. Yup, that's right. This game was so thorough that if you get Game Over, you're treated to a cinematic that showcases just how much you have failed any given level and its beloved characters. Most levels have their own unique Game Over epilogues that just make you feel like a complete garbage. For someone who absolutely adores the show that this game is based on, I don't want to see that! Uh, this is of course why I opted to restart each time I would lose a life or before I would get game over. I mean, come on! With the amount of times that I would die in any given game, I wasn't about to subject myself to a ridiculous amount of awful depressing game over cinematics! Speaking of depressing cinematics, there's a stipulation you have to meet in order to get the game's ultimate good ending. In order to get that good ending, you have to beat all of the levels and get the good endings for each and every one of those. You'll never guess which one I got. You have saved Mainframe.
But I regret there is some terrible news. We have suffered many casualties. Where's my brother? I'm afraid he did not survive, my child. I did my best. I would have done anything to save Enzo. What? <laughs> Massive casualties? Enzo's dead? I mean, we're not even talking about big tough guy Matrix Enzo. We're talking about cute, adorable, innocent baseball cap wearing Enzo. Yeah, he dies. Fong, he's the one that runs the principal office, offers a revert command to Bob that is essentially a time travel portal so he can go back in time with it and set things right. Wait a minute, is it just alluding to you, the player, going back to beat the level that you didn't get a good ending to? <laughs> I don't know. I was too busy crying over Enzo. Playing levels over is thankfully made easy. Despite the kind of game ending you get when you overall beat the entire game, you get a new option on the main menu called Replay. This lets you access all of the past levels. It's even nice enough to gray out the ones you got good endings to already and leave the bad ones in bold. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute, hang on a second. One? Just one? Why did I fail this one? Oh, well, yeah, okay, that, that might be a good reason. It took forever and a half to beat that boss. Well, how am I supposed to beat him faster? I can upgrade my weapons? Since when? How did... When did... When did this happen? Okay, so I upgrade my weapons, beat the level I needed to beat faster with said new weapons, fought the last boss again, which by the way is another virus named Hexadecimal, who is extremely attractive and yet very dangerous. Uh, this is probably why I have a fascination with women that can possibly kill me at the same time. Upon the defeat of the last boss in all the levels with a good ending, I was finally given the game's ultimate final good ending. You have saved us! You are truly the guardian of mainframe! Dot, Bob! I knew you could do it! I... I want to thank you for saving mainframe. It doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, and that's it. That was Reboot, the video game. And you know what? Despite everything, I absolutely love it to bits. Right off the bat, I'm just gonna say that it is not recommended to casual players. Honestly, if you're not a fan of Reboot, you're probably better off not playing this one. It's probably gonna be a lot more work than what you're you're willing to put into if you don't like you don't even like the series to begin with. I say that because I'm not sure it holds up as a standalone game. The story heavily relies on you knowing the show and the characters already. Somebody new can easily get lost and frustrated with this game, especially with the different endings. However, if you're indeed a fan of the series and don't mind sloppy controls, ridiculous 3D PlayStation 1 platforming, and dying dozens, and dozens, and dozens of times, well, I would actually recommend it. Mainframe Entertainment put a lot of work into the game, and it shows. It doesn't copy and paste the show for a poor excuse for a cash into a video game. It worked on it worked on it from the ground up, almost as if it were its own special, with dozens of episodes sprinkled in. They put the same amount of effort into the game as they would for an actual show. Personally, for me, as a fan of the show, getting the good endings to all of the levels of the game and putting out that extra effort to make sure I get that final good ending, it felt great. I can only assume it's because I genuinely love this game with all of my heart along with the, with the show. A love so strong that awful game mechanics can hardly dent my unrequited love. But, but that's just me. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if any of this looks uh, like it, it's not good, don't, it's okay, don't do it. <laughs> don't subject yourself to what I have. <laughs> anyway, that's it from me. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe right below this video here, and remember, Nothing ventured, nothing gained!